So today we're going to have a Power BI training, and the objective is to demonstrate how to use Power BI, right, in a step-by-step -step procedure to build supply chain applications. So in some sense, you can use Power BI to build like a software, right, that integrates with all the data of your company, right? So you can visualize, you can understand, right, the stories behind the data. Today, we're going to talk about two applications. I know there's tons of other applications. Uh, each of them are different, but here, let me talk about uh, two most, I would say, impactful and mo most popular and also uh, easy to do, something easy to do. Okay. So first application that I will talk about is sales and inventory management or material management. I'm sure this applies to Every company is highly impactful and popular. And second, I'm going to talk about logistics and fulfillment. All right. So if you sell a physical product, you can have this problem, right? So how is your uh, fulfillment time doing, right? Did you meet your customer service target, right? And if you if you didn't, what is the cause behind it? Here's my objective. Right, and I'm going to talk about two things. The first is Power BI tutorial. Right, I'm going to start with the basics. Right, how to make let's say a dashboard, a very simple dashboard, also powerful dashboard, in let's say ten minutes. Right, and then we're going to talk about right a full build dashboards. Right, with all kinds of visuals, formats, and all kinds of tricks. Now we're going to combine this with our supply chain applications. Now we have to get data ready. So data preparation and how to calculate the KPIs. Different supply chain applications have different KPIs and which are not readily available from the data. So you have to calculate it. And that makes this uh, tutorial different from the general Power BI tutorial. So we need to learn how to calculate those KPIs, right? And of course, data refreshing, data updating, right? And, and so on. So this is what we believe, right? So we need to integrate the technology, which is Power BI, with the supply chain domain knowledge. Your insights, your your uh, your decisions to make an impact. So let's first talk about the uh, sales and inventory application. So let me first state the objective. So what do we what do we do, right? If we have tons of sales and inventory data. Right. What we usually want to do is to track sales and inventory status, right? For for monitoring, for monitoring the, the sales, the cost, right? We and also for SQ rationalization. So I'm sure your company has has maybe tens of thousands of PUs. Right. Some of them are performing very well, some of them may not be performing. So you want to see which one is performing and which one's not. So in case that you need to uh, you need to reduce the SKUs, just put resources on the, on the performing SKUs. So this is called uh, the SQ rational addition. And of course, you also want to identify over, overstock and understock situations, right? To reduce cost and in, improve sales. <clears throat> okay, here is a sample data. I want to keep everything as simple as possible. So let me just explain this, this picture and then I will go to the Excel file. So in this data, I have uh, essentially only seven columns of raw data from A to G, right? And for a, column A, I have the SQ ID, right? stock, stock keeping unit, that's the different SQs. And column B is the year or month or week, whatever you want. Right here, I use year at for simplicity. And C is the average inventories in terms of units, right, for that year. We also have the total demand, right, in units for that year, right? Now we have a category uh, um, column which indicates, right, this SQ belongs to which category. And of course, we need to know the unit cost for that SQ, also the unit price, how much you sell for for that SQ, right? These are the basic information. Now, these are the seven columns I just talked about, right? About SQUs, right? Their average inventory, total demand for the same time period. You can easily pull these, these numbers from your database. 
right? If you don't have average inventories, what you do is you take a few, uh, uh, let's say time points from the data, from your database and, uh, and calculate what's the, what's the inventory at the end of the period. Then you do an average of, of all the time points, right? You, you, you record it. <clears throat> right, then you you get an average inventory. Now, total demand for that time time period, it's easy to do, and cost and uh, unit price, yeah, they are they are right there. Okay, now the columns in yellow are all the calculated columns. Right, the calculation is really very simple. Let's say, um, let's start with the simplest one, if revenue, right? So that's how much, that's how much money we made by selling, let's say, the first SQ, right? That's essentially uh, the total demand times the unit price, right? Same thing we can do with the cost, right? And that's the total demand times the unit cost. Now the profit for that SQ is essentially the difference between revenue and the cost, right? Now, inventory investment, that's the average dollars tied in that inventory. So that should be the unit cost times the average inventory level. The last, also most important KPI is dates of supply, or some people call that DOS. First of all, you need you need to make sure demand is greater than zero, because in sometimes demand may not be greater than zero. Maybe you don't have any demand for this item, right? So you need to make sure. That's why I have an if statement here, right? If demand is greater than zero, then I'm going to do this calculation, right? In this calculation, I first have the total. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the average inventories in the enumerator, then I divide the average daily demand. The average daily demand is the average total demand in that year, right? Divided by 365, that's the number of days in year. Um, let me say it again, okay? Um, so to calculate the dates of supply or DOS, right? Essentially, you want to find out how many days of demand Right. Well, the average inventory level, average inventory satisfied. If my time unit is not a year, it's months or week, what do I do? Right. That's also very simple. So in that event, you are not divided by 365, right? You are divided by either 30 or 31 for months or seven for week. Now, getting ready for the data is very important. Right. If the data has error, Power BI were detected. I will ask you to correct. So you have you were you have to come back to the Excel file to do the, all the corrections. There is my Power BI. So let me first tell you a, a very simple uh, a dashboard. Okay, and and let me explain what I have on this dashboard, and then I will create this dashboard again on a new blank page. On the top, I have a narrative. So essentially you can write everything, anything here. And then here are the totals, right? I have three totals over here, right? Total revenue, total profit, and total cost, right? To keep track of things, of, of the overall picture, right? What are we doing as a whole, right? And here I'm breaking the sales down, right? Also the profit down by SQID, by different SQUs, right? I wanna know how they are performing. And it looks like I have a very long tail Right, so meaning we have huge amount of items that are not very performing, right? Only a few that perform extremely well. Right now, now here I have I have a breakdown, right? By revenue, uh, the categories, different categories, and also profit breakdown by categories. Right now, here is my control, right? I can select all. Right, or I can select only one of them. Let's say we have different categories of products, right? So I have CPGs, I have uh, electronics, I have others, I have I have packaging materials, whatever you have, right? I can select different ones, and that's going to show me, you know, the uh, the sales or distribution of sales in that category. So I will be able to drill down, right? Now see here, I have a uh, a tiered by right, slicer. Double slicer here, right? Let me not select all. Okay. So and 
for each of the categories, I have all the SQs within that, within that category I can select from. Right, so that allow you to drill into uh, uh, more specific uh, details to see what is going on. Let's create a new one. Right, now this is my page one, whatever you can give a name to it. So let me just put it here. All right, now the first thing I like to do is I always like to change the, the background. So it's your it natural uh, videos stand out. So let's go to format, the page, and go to wallpaper. Just make let's make it simple, okay? And now let's create the narrative here. Now, um, so in this panel, you see that uh, visualization, right? There, they have all the ki different kinds of visualizations, pictures, graphs you can do. Now we'll try this one by one. Now, uh, before I try this, I also want to tell you, here's your data, right? You click on this, you, these, these are all the columns you have, okay? Um, and on your left, left hand side, you have the report view, that's the graphs, right? That's what we're working on now. You can also have the table view, which is gonna show you the table, which I just imported. Okay, let me first create a narrative. All right, let's use custom. No, sorry, fine, that's okay. So here, uh, let's see, and type, let's see, sales dashboard. Oops, let me just make it bigger. Let's put it in the middle and broad it. Let's change the color more cheerful. All right. Sales dashboard. Or oh, let's say XYZ company. All right. So then you can tell people what you want to track. Let's say the totals, the breakdowns, and so on and so forth. Okay. Thank you. As you can see here, right? You can change the fonts, the colors, the, the location, and, and, and so on and so forth. So whatever you want to do. All right. <clears throat> now let's create the totals. So let's go to data. Let's see. We want to see the total revenue, right? So here, that's your column of total revenue. Initially, the default option is to take the sum. That's why you, have, you see the sum symbol here. So let me just pull it over here. Initially, it's going to give you a bar chart. That's the default choice. Uh, it doesn't mean anything here, so let's make it smaller and change this to card. Right? Now, you can also uh, give a more fancy look of this. For example, you can do this. This is like a, like a meter, right? So, and and feel free to try out different kind of uh, uh, pictures here. Here's a table view, just, just give you, you know, the numbers. It doesn't look very good. Okay, let's keep it as a card. Mm -hmm. Let's put, let's do the same thing, right? For profit. Now, a different way of doing that is you can first, uh, let's say, put, a, put your videos up here and then drag your profit to it. <clears throat> Either way is fine. So suppose you want to know how the revenue uh, is distributed by SQUs. So then we'll do a bar chart. So click anywhere on your report. All right, let's see, we're going to do a bar chart. OK, now see, for the bar chart, you have x axis, you have y axis. You have legend and so on and so forth. So here you have to specify X and Y. So what we want to know is revenue by SQ, right? So revenue should go to Y, right? SQ ID should go to X. Now, suppose we want to change the direction of the, of the picture. Maybe this seems to be more dramatic, right? So you can do that too. Uh, now, you might want to do 
let me come back. You might want to do char curves instead of all the bars, right? You want to do chart. I'm sorry, the, the knives or the shaded knives, right? Uh, this is double, okay. Or you want to do this funnel. Well, I don't know how many people like this, but I don't like this very much. So uh, I want to show you something really fancy here. This is this is like a Pareto, like a Pareto chart, right? We're going to use this for our fulfillment analysis, right? Essentially, it stack, right, all the bars together up to the total. So let's come back. Okay, now you can show multiple bars on the same graph, right? In addition to revenue, I'm gonna also show the profit. So that's, you can drag the profit, right? Behind X, also into Y axis. You see? Now I have both, mm -hmm. right? I have both curves and both bars. So one bar is, and the light blue one is revenue, and the dark blue one is profit. Okay, so, and this picture is interesting. It's easy to say that the highest revenue uh, item does not give you the highest profit. Oh, here it is, right? So you're right, I only have the idea. I don't know what that is, right? So, and I can give a name. Let's say here is the name, SQ name. Now, now, so let's just do this one, widget one, uh, widget mm -hmm. two, and widget up to 6,000, you know, okay? Now, remember, I already input this data in, right? So let me save it. And in my Power BI, let's refresh the data. See here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Let's check. Uh, SQ name right here. That's SQ name. Right? Now, if you want to look at data inside Power BI, just look at this. Go to the table view. Now the name is already imported. Okay, now if you don't like this name, like the SQ numbers, which doesn't mm -hmm. mean anything, Right, let's change it from XKU ID. Let's remove it. And let's go to SQ name. Here we go. Yeah, wow. Well, because that's what you would want to do if you were presenting it to like a manager or something. Absolutely. Let me show you another, you can change different views on, 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 on this bar chart. Right, let's see, let's do it in a, in a vertical way. Right now, you can also do it on the top, like this. So it's stacked up. When well, you stack the uh, revenue, uh, the the profit on top of revenue, if that's what you like to show. Now you can also use lines, right? Two different curves, right? Or shaded curves, right? Well, I think this is a, oh, this is the stacked curves, stacked curves. Right, so these are all kinds of videos you can change. You, you don't like the color, go ahead and change it. You don't like, let's say, another interesting, uh, most likely uh, very useful tool you, you would use is sometimes you want to format it in different way. For example, I want to change the title. I don't like this sum of revenue and sum of profit by SQ name. You know, let's say, uh, which doesn't sound very natural. So if I want to do, uh, if I change the title, let's go to video in general. Right, title here. I can still keep the sum of revenue and the sum of uh, profit, right? By SQ, no, I don't like the SQ name, right? By SQ, for example. Here we go, it's changed. Now I can put a little divider, right? Divider on, right? So it can separate my title from the picture, which make it look nicer. Right now, this is just the general. You can feel free to explore. They have all kinds of uh, effects, tour tips, and and so on, and spacing and so on. You you can adjust. Now for videos, for example, I don't like the color. Right, here's the nice. Right, let's add a zoo slider. 
So then you can just, uh, it's easy for you to control, right? To see the details you want. Now for the knives, right? Solid, uh, so uh, here's the color, right? You don't like the color, feel free to change that. All right. Now let's create some more videos. Let's break the, the sales, the total sales or and, and profit down by category. Let's see how different categories were, were performing. Right, so for this purpose, let's use the revenue again. So make sure don't click anything. If you click on a particular graph and you make changes, then the changes will be made to that graph. If you want to create a new graph or new visual, make sure you are not selecting any, any of the existing values. Right, so here, let me do the revenue. Yeah, default is a bar chart. Let me make this smaller. So I want to know how the revenue right, is distributed among different categories. Right here. Let me change this to a dollar chart. <clears throat> okay. By the way, you see that uh, the selected value is circled, right? Is ha has a has a solid edge. Right, has a solid edge. That means, that means for this value, right, and this type of graph is selected. <clears throat> if I click on a different, uh, value here, you see, right, this type of graph is selected because it has an edge, right? Okay, just for information. Now for donor chart, uh, I need to put I need to specify an agent, right? Let's put category into an agent, so I will be. Able so, so then the picture will show me, right, by different category, I'm sorry, how the revenue is distributed or is split, right, among different categories. Okay, so that's very simple. Now that's, if you are not satisfied with the dollar chart, you want to use pie chart, just change the pie chart. Let's finally put in the, uh, the controls on the slicer. The slicer allow you to drill in or change your selection. Okay, now uh, for slicer, let's first use category. So let's select slicer. Here's the slicer, right? Here's my slicer. So that's first use category. Just pull into the slicer, then you have the category. You have the slicer for the category. And here are different ways. The, the default choice is a drop down list. So here, if I select different, let's see, CPG, uh, different categories, I get different. I get uh, the videos for that specific category, right? Electron, mechanical, right? This it can be different distribution. And these are the uh, electronics, right? and so on and so forth. <clears throat> now, now, if you want to unselect a specific category, just, just select it again, that's it. Now for slicer, there's all kinds of different formatting you can do, right? Um, here we go. So size of setting. So here, the default choice is the vertical list, right? You can, you can change to tiles that look like this. Maybe that's easy to collect. That's easy to, to click, right? So it's it's really your choice. And it's uh, when you change the size, it's going to be automatically adjusted. And you can also do the drop down uh, menu. Okay. Now it's for selection, let's change it back to vertical list. And suppose you want to change to selection skill. You can do it, you can allow only single select. Now in this case, you can only select one. You cannot select all of them. Multiple select on. Uh, now if you want to select multiple, you have to use control. Okay, so on your key on your key keypad, we send the control. Let's see, here's control. Then you can save it both. Okay. Now, sometimes this is not very convenient. So let's say maybe we should add a show all button. Right. So once you click the show all, then everything will be selected. 
Okay. Now here are some variations of the slicers because uh, I talk about this because you're going to use this a lot. Finally, I want to show um, now double slicing. So suppose you are not only satisfied with the category, you, you also want to drill into the specific right um, SQUs. You can pull SQ over here and put it <clears throat> also in the field. Now you have a double slicer, right? So for each, each of the categories, you have all the SQs within that category, which you can select. Now that's to inventory, which is a little bit more challenging. First tell you what it looked like, then we will recreate the same, the same page. Okay, this is the title, right? The narrative, uh, you know, same thing as before, so I'm not gonna get into it. And these are my slicers, the double slicer, right? And these are my totals, right? Uh, now, not total sales, but total in terms of uh, the uh, the inventory performance. So I wouldn't know, for example, right? What is the medium dates of supply? Remember, every SQ has uh, dates of supply, right? Has the inventory dates. And here I wouldn't know the medium because we have so many different numbers. I want to get uh, you know overall picture of, of of all these numbers. So medium will be a good. Uh, measure for that. Now I also want to get the the total the overall days of supply, right? Which is not the medium, not the average, right? But the total investment of inventory versus the the cost of goods sold. This actually is how how companies calculate their overall performance, right? Across all product lines. That's the inventory turnover, right? We need to calculate this too. Um, and this is the total inventory investment, right? So currently we invested about uh, almost $600 million in inventories, right? Now, these are the totals, the overall performance of, of all the SQs combined. Now, of course, we also have some breakdowns, right? Here are my top 50 SQs in days of supply. So these are the, even, these are the SQs with tons of excessive inventories that's um, tracking. So I, I want to know, you know, which SQs has the worst uh, or, or the most inventories, excessive inventories. Well, equally important, I also want to know, right, the SQs, the top 50 SQs, for example, right, that will likely be short of supply or understocked. So, so an understock SQs, right, we face a shortage, which is loss of sales. Right, and the overstocked SQs will face waste, right, and inventory abstinences. <clears throat> right now, here I also want to compare across different categories, right, the inventory performance. Right, you can see that, right, for some categories such as electronics, we got a lot of inventories, right. That's the overall SQ, uh, DOS, days of supplies, like category. So the electronics has almost seventy days of inventories. Right, compare ways that say uh, uh, structural, right, which has only about 40, 44 days of inventories, right? Let's say within the same company, right? Different categories of products have different right, inventory performance. It's interesting to know that because then you can find out what was going on. And here is a breakdown of inventory investment by category, right? So, and here, of course, if I select one of that, I will be able to see, right, how that category were performing, right, in terms of um, overstock, understock, overall DOS, right? And of course, I can also change, let's click it back, right? And I can also, um, let's say, drill into certain uh, SQUs, right, to see what's happening with that specific SQ. Same thing here. Let me just change the uh, the background. Here is my data supply column. Okay, so let's pull it in here. Like you know, when the default is is a bar chart, and I also take the sum. It doesn't mean anything here. So I have to change it to let's say first of all to a card. But I'm not interested in the sum of this so like it doesn't mean anything so here I want to change it to the medium 
That's it. Okay. Now, uh, some people may ask, do you need average? I would say for data supply, average over all the data supplies doesn't really mean a lot of things. So, but a different way to calculate that is to calculate overall data supply. Here, I create a new measure. Let's open it and you will see what that is. Overall data supply. So here you need to type in a little uh, uh, formula here. It's like Excel, right? So you do some Excel calculation. You also have to type in, let's say, a formula. It's it's not programming at all. It's just you know use an existing formula. So here I take a sum. Let me explain. So what I want to do is I want to sum up all the inventory investment and divide it by all the cost of goods sold. Right. That's the that's the way to calculate this supply. Then of course multiplies 165, right? That's the uh, way to calculate data supply, the overall data supply, right? So first of all, I calculate the total inventory investment. So I take the sum, use the sum function, right? Parentheses, and within the parentheses, I have, I need to specify which table, which is data, right? Here, that's the data, that's the table name data, right? And I use breaks, right, for columns. And that's the column name, inventory investment uh, in parentheses dollar sign. And if I go back, you can see that right here, inventory investment, right? Parentheses dollar. So you create a new measure. The beauty of this new measure is, you know, it's going to change. It, it's dynamic. Meaning if you change, uh, uh, if, you, if you use filters, if you uh, use slicers and so on, this value will change accordingly. So that's gonna make this graph or, or, or card dynamic, right? And multiply 365, right? And then divide by the sum of total cost. Right? And that will give you the overall data supply, okay? Now this is not uh, in the original data and you really have to, you have to create this new measure. Now, to create a new measure, here is what you do. You go to this table, see the three dots, and here you just type in new measure. It's working on it. And give it a name and type in the expression. That's it. Okay, I already did that. I'm going to do it again. Okay. Um, so and here's total DOS. So let me just pull it over here and change it. A card. And that's the like fifty three dates of supply. Now, <clears throat> another important measure for inventory is inventory turnover. So, again, this measure is not in the original data, and we have to create. Right. So, and let me show you what's the formula for that. So essentially, I go to uh, the three dots for the table and create a new measure. And in new measure, type in whatever names you want it. And even turnover is, is simple, right? It's the total cost of all the SQs and divided by the inventory investment, the sum of inventory investment. Um, let's put it over here and do the same thing again. Let's create as a card. So that tells you the even total over is about 6.8 times a year. Uh, you can do that, but if you do that in Excel, it's not going to be dynamic. It's going to be a fixed number. But if you do it in Power BI, this number will be dynamic, right? Dynamic in the sense that, let me just create a slide so you'll see like why, what is dynamic and what is not. So here, let me just create a simple slicer with different categories. And here I check different category. This number will change. No. <clears throat> but if you do it in Excel, it's not going to change. It's fixed. But first of all, you need to know the, the, the formula, the expression. Okay. That's why not we do this? We, we first do it in Excel. So just get you familiar with the expression. And then we will just copy that Excel or translate that, that Excel for expression mm -hmm. to a Power BI expression. How's that? So this typically belongs to an inventory management class. 
so in Power BI, people won't talk won't talk about this because this is too domain specific. So in, in let's say in Excel, if you want to calculate the overall data, uh, uh, let's say even a turnover, let's let's put it here. Say inventory turnover, right? Over. Let's say if we want to calculate all. Now, the expression for inner turnover is essentially the cost. Let's just put it here. Cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory investment. Uh, it should be the unit cost, oh, right? Here. So that's the total cost. Mm -hmm. Now it's you know I have to change the format to uh to different format which is now currency which uh, we use that number for example okay so, right all right now you can sell this is what you that's what you do now of course you can see that and first of all let's look at the expression right it's the sum of all the inventory uh, of all the cost. A second divided by the sum of all the inventories. So essentially, you need to translate this expression to Power BI. So in Power BI, let me create another one. All right, let's create a new measure. Let's say uh, we do it again, inventory over. Let's, let's do it as one, okay? So because I already have one, that's the overall. Right. Now we need to essentially copy this expression in here. So that's why we need to do a sum. Right. See, it tell you the data. Data is the table, right? Uh, table, uh, sum of table what? The cost, right? That's right, and then divided by the sum. You see here, it's give you suggestions. Even the investment. Okay, so now I have the second one. This is the one. See, even the turnover. Name even the turnover one. Yes. This even tolerable one. Okay. So let's put in here. Okay, let's change it to that's it. Now let's create the top 50 days of supply. That's the overstock cases. So <clears throat> let me see. Uh top 50 days of supply. So I need to do a days of supply. I need to do uh a bar chart. Right. Now in the bar chart, the X axis will be remember this is a vertical bar chart, right? So the X axis will be my TPI. That's the data supply. The Y axis will be SQs. Let's use name. Okay. And here we go. Now, usually it's not going to give you the top 50, okay? It's going to give you all of them. Now, that's 6,000 plus. If you want to limit only to the first top, let's say 50, 10, whatever you, you want, you need to use a filter. Let's go to filter, right? We want to change. We want, to, we want this video to, to only show the top 50. Okay, go to SQ name. Change basic filtering to top n. How many top do you want to have? 50, 10, 100, whatever, right? Let's say let's do uh, top 100. Now, by value, here, um, there's a supply, right? Apply filter. That's it. Now you can do top bottom as well. You see, you have bottom. So I'm gonna do the top bottom for the uh for the under stock cases. Let's close this. 
And here we go. Now I only have the top 100. Now also I want to change the name, right? Let's just do this and change the name, visual, title. Let's see, some of uh, data supplies by SQL name, or say, let's say changes to top 100. Uh, let's say SQLs by data supply. How about that? Right. So this clearly shows my most, uh, 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 my my SQs with the highest access inventory. Right. And these are all the items over here. Now we can do a similar thing for the understock cases. Understock cases will be okay. Let's let's do it quick. They will do the exact same thing, right? So that's first. Another one. Now, under stock cases, sometimes it's often more in, more useful because these are the SQs facing all already in stock out. So you are, you are losing sales on these items, which is more critical. So let's look at uh, data supply over here, right? Uh, and also SQs, uh, SQ name, right, for the y-axis. Now. I want to change this to sort axis, ascending, not descending, right? Because we're interested in the uh, items with the with the smallest right, number of uh, uh, of supplies. Let's do ascending, okay, and uh, let's do top one hundred, right? As well, so we'll do this here again instead of. Basic filtering to top N. Instead of top, we do the bottom. Let's say 100. Oops. And then do data supply for the value here. Then apply. Now we have we only have the 100 worst performers over here. Now I want to make this more alarming. Let's see, give it different color. We'll, we'll use the color here is the bar. Uh, blue seems to be too smoothing, right? So let's make it more alarming, like red. Overall DOS. That's the new measure I, I created. Okay. Okay, so now, again, right, on this table, on this dashboard, I have the overall performance of my inventories, right? The days of supply, even the turnover, and um, total inventory investment, right? I also have the worst performers in terms of overstock, in terms of understock. I also compared among different categories their inventory performance. So you can see, right, electronics actually has the worst performance in terms of overstocking and also understocking, see that? So this is this is the most problematic category, right? It has even it has many overstocking items and also many understocking items. Right, let's look at CPG, right? CPG is is better, right? In terms of overstocking and understocking has almost long, right? Also, also only a few of them. Right now, for let's say structural, structural probably has the highest, uh, most problems in overstocking. Right, most SQs in overstocking. You see that, right? But it has almost long of the understocking problems. Now, one last thing I want to state about this uh, dashboard is, um, now I I did first sales and then inventories. Now sometimes you might want to put all the information together on the same chart, right? Um, and here, you can. what you can do is, you don't have to recreate everything again. You can just copy and paste. For example, right, I like this picture on this graph, right? I want to combine this sales picture with some inventory, you know, videos together to, to, to 
to give an overview or, or comprehend or summary. How do I do that, right? So actually you can just click on this and control C, right? And here, control V, paste it. Then you come over here. Now, what I just talked about is the internal BI. Right? That's you use internal data, you company's data, right? To do comparisons, to, to do drill ins, to do realization. But there's another actually very useful resources for you, which is the external BI. That's you use your competitor's data, right? To do a competitive benchmarking. Let me show you why you need to do an external BI, right? Let's say you work for a retail company or a manufacturing company and so on, all right? Now, of course you can compare your, um, you can use your internal data to develop, to develop insights and how, how different SKUs, how different uh, categories or, or, or even facilities, right? Or locations performing in terms of inventories and production. But you can also compare with your competitors. Sometimes sometimes it's very informative because they may use complete, complete different strategy, right? For example, you can do a simple ranking of enterprises, right? For retailing companies, right? In terms of data supply, here they call it inventory dates. It's the same thing, data supply. Right, you can see Amazon is, is doing great in terms of inventory dates. It only has like 24, 25 days of inventories, right? Versus our Best Buy, right? Which has 50 days, uh, TGX, 60 days, Target, 60 days. And uh, well, some others, knows, well, more than 100 days. Right, these are, these are the places we, we shop frequently, right? Home Depot and so on. So, these are the overall DOS, right? Across different companies. So you can see immediately the difference, right? Here's Macy's, Macy's about 120 days. Now, of course you can also drill in to let's say the returning company right here, right? Right, this, the, the, in the previous page, we just look at S&P 500 companies. And here we can look at all the companies, all the publicly traded companies in the US. Right, these will be about 500 companies, right? And you can see the best performers will be about 24 days for retailing. The worst performers will be about 183 days of inventories. You can see the significant difference, right? So instead of comparing with a better performing, let's say, uh, product in your own company, you can compare, right, to a better performing co competitors. Sometimes it's more, it's more insightful. Right now, one more thing is about uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, right? Now, New Jersey is the hub of, of most pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceuticals actually has huge inventory problem. You see that the medium of pharmaceutical biotech life sciences, life sciences companies in the US carries about 208 eight days of inventories. Now, the best case, 50 days. Worst case is more than 1,000 days. You can also demonstrate the uh, inventory days, for example, right here, right? Over time. You can see Amazon was performing constantly about 30, 20 days and so on. And Macy's, for example, right? You have to side by side comparison or it's, it's about 220 days, 200 days. Uh, recently they have improved, right? But still way beyond Amazon's numbers. Put inventory days together with other KPIs who are interested. And let's say growth margin. Right, gross margin actually for retailers is a strong indicator of their pricing. Makes sense, right? Think about what's gross margin. Gross margin is how much you marked up, right? You get something from the suppliers, the manufacturers, and then you resell it, right? At a different price. And the markup is essentially your gross margin. And you see Amazon's gross margin, well, it used to be like 20, 20, 25, 20, 23%. Now it's 18. 15%, which is really, really low. And that means they didn't mark up by much. But if you look at, uh, you can, but if you look at Macy's, which is in blue, they mark up on average by 40%. Now during the pandemic, they it reduced a little bit, but they went back, went, went back up again after pandemic. But it's interesting to see that despite such a, such a high markup, Macy's is not making a lot more money than, than Amazon, right? If you look at net margin, it's about the same. 
right? Of course, let's let's eliminate pandemic, which uh, hurts uh, uh, Macy a lot and benefit Amazon <clears throat> because everybody go online shopping now. But still, if you look at other times, right? Um, so Macy's does not have a distinct advantage in terms of net margin over Amazon, despite they charge the customer so much. Now, another prospect of charging people a lot is you don't grow much, right? If you don't, if you don't charge people a lot, if you price no, uh, you will grow very fast. And look at Amazon's growth rate versus Macy's growth rate. Right? Just to use this example, I want to show, I want to show if you do external business intelligence using competitors' data, sometimes it's 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 much more informative, right? Because your competitors may use a different completely different strategy, right? Which can be can be really useful for you, right? So so if you can now you can also break down there is a revenue to see what's the cost components, right? Which is you can see Macy's spend about 60% of their revenue um, on cost of goods sold. Amazon spent about 84%. Right? This is another way of saying Amazon is not pricing, is not making uh, pricing much higher. It's pricing much lower than, than, than Macy's, right? So the Macy's leave like 40% of the revenue, right? Potentially for net margin, but because they're uh, cost of goods sold, I'm sorry, the, the sale, SGA cost is so high. Look at this, 33% of the revenue is GNA, which yes. eats up. Yeah, go ahead. So are all these uh, visuals coming from Power BI? Uh, actually from this website, because the data is not, so for Power BI, you still have to clean the data, prepare the data yourself. It's just data visualization. No, the answer is no. It's it's from a different site. Okay. This is the link. But you could do it if you have the data on Power BI. Right. So, but the, here the, the the objective is is to is to develop insights, business insights, right, uh, from the data, so you can improve the company's performance. Right, so whichever tools you use, that's the objective, right? Uh, and and let me continue. So here you can see Amazon only spent nine percent or almost about ten percent of the of the revenue on on SGNA in comparison to Macy's, which is thirty three percent. So this tells you why uh Macy's, despite they charge the customer so much, they don't make a lot of money. They make about the same amount of money as uh, as Amazon because Amazon is a lot more efficient, right? Their Amazon's exchange cost is not lower than Macy's. But but honestly though, Yao, they're in they have a completely yeah. different business model, right? Between the two. Amazon uh, is basically an e-commerce company. Yes. E-commerce companies don't do a whole lot of advertising and promotion. And Macy's yes. is sort of a department store business, but yes. they do have to run a lot of promotions and do a lot of advertising, right? So that that may be a factor in this analysis we are looking at, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of difference. No difference. But there's only also, uh, some commonalities. They are yeah. all in retailing, right? What they do is they take the product from the manufacturers and resell it to the customers. Now, they use different ways to do that. Maybe maybe Macy's can consider the same way, right? And they are all in retailing business. Yeah. Right. And Macy's also has a Macy's.com e-commerce business. Yes, the absolutely. People more, look very similar to Amazon, but yes. the department store business is where a lot of the cost, of the um, SG&A cost of battery. Yes, you look at this, 33% of the revenue. That's horrible, right? And in comparison, some somebody, some other people only spend about 10%. And look at the industry average here. That's the retailing for the entire US, 17%. I would say Macy spend way too much on that. 
And let me tell you why. Here's why, right? Why Macy spend so much? Why Amazon spend so little? What is the driver behind it? And here we go. If you do a correlation analysis, right, between the the sales general administrative cost as a percentage of revenue, right, versus even the turnover, you find a strong correlation. <clears throat> a very strong correlation. And even and, and the, the correlation is consistent for different years. Right, so which means if you improve even the turnover, which means you reduce even the dates, right, you will reduce the sales general administrative cost as a percentage of the total revenue. This is the real data. So the conclusion is, right, and if you look at their, their asset breakdown, you'll find out here's the inventory, uh, uh, retailing, U.S. average is about 16% of the total assets. Amazon, 6%. Macy's, 25%. So tell me inventory is not important. Right? I would say, I would argue in this case actually shows inventory is very important and it's for retailing. Right? Macy's clearly has an inventory problem. And uh, one of the reasons for Amazon to re to 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 reduce sales GA costs to such a lower level is because it can manage inventories much more efficiently than Macy's. So fulfillment, right? As you imagine, if you it's it's a very popular and high impact problem because it directly it's directly related to customer service. Right, so uh, to logistics and customer service, right? It's it's very popular and high impact, right? So so in typical and all and it it's uh, in almost every supply chain job. So let me uh, tell you first the objective. So when you study uh, uh, fulfillment, your typical objective is to track fulfillment performance, right? In order to check if you meet customer service target. Right now, once you find out you are not meeting the customer service target, right, you need to identify the causes for the underperformance. Right. So now here's the data. Right, as we did before, we keep it very simple. Right, only the, the, the most necessary data is here. So we have the we have the SQIDs. That's the items you sell. Right, the demanded date, shipping date, shipping quantity, a uh, demanded quantity, shipped quantity price, and also to customers region. And you can calculate the fulfillment time by subtracting, by, by calculating a difference between the demanded date and the shipped date, right? Makes sense, right? So when you ship it, how many days it takes you to actually ship it out? Right, now the fulfillment time is the key, is the KPI, right? Is the, is the uh, most important factor you are tracking. This company is huge and they promise their customers, right? For expedited, for expedited shipping, they will deliver it on time. 85% within one day. That's what they promised. And for routine shipping, just think about Amazon, right? How long it take for Amazon to deliver the, your order the item, right? The routine shipping, they are promised three days, 85% on time, on time performance. And so this will, Underperformance on delivery will directly affect your sales, your customer relationship, your customer loyalty, and so on. So you really don't want to miss on this. Okay, by the way, every time you open Power BI, although it's free, it always asks you to register, to log in, to pay, and so on. You don't have to, just need to lower it. Okay, now I have three slides here. Right, first to give an overview. Second, to, to really calculate the service level, the customer service. And finally, to find out the causes behind the underperformance. Now, the first slide, essentially, I brought out all the, uh, these are the fulfillment time, right? See that? Fulfillment time, all the fulfillment time. But I I, 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 dis I display the fulfillment time over, over demanded time, right? I find out in most times, actually, uh, our fulfillment time is pretty, Pretty reasonable, right? Let's say four days, two days, right? 
this the meeting within that time within that bucket, the uh, demanded time bucket, seven days. But in a certain year, which is 2012, I have a lot of very long fulfillment times. Let's say up to 73 days, up to uh, 200 days, and so on and so forth. Right? So looks like the, the our perf fulfillment performance is not consistent over time. And also I have I have the uh, some simple statistics, right, on the fulfillment time. Right? And because uh, how many data I have? I have 17K data. 17K. Right? So the medium is five days. The average is 70 uh, 30, 37 days because you know. I have some very long fulfillment times. And standard deviation is 73 days. We have a significant variation, right, in our customer service. Now, service level. Now here, I want to find out, right, for different years, I want to, I want, I want to find out the distribution, right, of my fulfillment times, right? For example, I can see here, right, that's the, that I, I split the fulfillment time in terms of beans. So I have, I have one zero to five days, five to 10 days, uh, uh, 10 to 15 days and so on and so forth. So you see that here, right? I have the beans and I put the fulfillment times. I count how many, for how many times I have my fulfillment times within let's say zero to five days, which is, which is 8,077 times, right? And how many times I have from five to 10 days, I have, 2,600, uh, 679, 79 fulfillment times, and so on, right? So we need to know how to print the histograms. We also need to know by right, our uh, one day delivery performance, right? Remember, we promised, how, how, do, how much we promised? One day, 85 performance, 85%, right? Let's say three days, 85% performance. The question is, did we achieve that? Let's do it. Three days, right? Let's type in here three. Well, the fill rate, which is the, the service level, is only about 40%. It's way below the target, 85% service level. That's the benefit. You can change this your time to anything you like. Let's say, how about one week? Right? One week should be better, right? Well, one week, 60%. About two, what about one month? One month, seventy six percent. So even one month, even if even if we set the deliver day to be to be to uh, deliver time to be to be one month thirty days, we still didn't achieve eighty five percent failure. That's how bad it is. And let me let me see this for any company. Let's say for 99% of the companies, if you do this analysis, you'll find out they didn't achieve what they, what they want to achieve. 